Dear friends and colleagues, I have seen some of my old media interview videos and images mischievously and callously re-edited and distributed in increasing proportion by some elements who I suspect are intent on creating a certain line of political posturing. In the past, I have ignored this, but I'm now compelled to respond. Given the probable input and um, interpretation of these images by some of you, my friends, these interviews and the videos have been adulterated and presented as if they were conducted today. Yet they are more than six years old. The people doing this, I presume, are seeking to create the impression that there are some special people, in quotes, in the movement who are jostling for positions in the event of any form of succession and leadership in the party and country. They assume that if they throw my name in this melee, it makes their games appear legitimate and credible. This is wrong. You will not use me or anyone uh, I work with in this undisciplined and aimless behavior. For those who vent this thinking, there are two problems. First, the people behind it know there is no election going on now, and we only just got out of one. I was not a participant in this election, and therefore, I am not petitioning for anything. Why would I, therefore, I or anyone project themselves in a non-existent contest now? What outcome would one be aiming at? Who is this who has time on their hands for these destructive games at a time when the country is moving forward with the work of healing rifts that were provoked by the recent elections? Secondly, this fruitless social media campaign has an underlying intention of driving a wage among supporters of the movement as if the organization has neither structures, nor system to make decisions about leadership renewal. I suspect this is enemy propaganda that is meant to cause unnecessary strife and it should be rejected. Anyone who falls for these stunts or is very casual about their negative impact is an adversary of our stability to which many gave their lives. This disinformation endangers the process of uh, institution building and undermines the very efforts that we need to create certainty and predictability for Uganda's politics. Perhaps the people behind this are unaware that institutions carry the collective hopes of a nation. They marshal the strength of each of us as individuals to build a greater good, and they are the only means of overcoming human limitations imposed by mortality. We should work so hard to nurture and to strengthen these institutions instead of playing childishly against them. These people who act outside the system can therefore not be my comrades. They should know that Uganda is neither a monarchy nor is the movement a tree for charlatan climbers to be abused by any illegitimate interests anyhow. Legitimacy in the movement and in any organization is a function of merit, capability, and contribution. These attributes can only grow from the soil called orderliness, and they can only be watered by a stream called transparency. Now, to you who I work with, or who have seen our efforts in the past, and you are genuinely confused by this contrived online gimmickry laid out in pictures, I would like to assure you that I continue to work as a volunteer for building national collective values, that I continue to support efforts to win our youth from dizzying empty politics so that our youth can concentrate on creating their own enterprises. Even if there might be some of you who admittedly see and appreciate the work we do or wants to work with me or think that one can lead, no one has come to me to consult me on anything that you see circulating on social media. I see these images just like many of you do. 
and I have no hand in them. Don't I have a right of say to be consulted, even if you wanted my opinion on these issues? In the 2015 NRM race, I did not hide behind any social media stance to state my position. I went to all the corners of our country, reaching out to many of our elders and to thousands of young people. We worked in broad daylight. I explained the issues of our time as I saw them and what we need to do in a growing country with many challenges. We showed a way to fix some of these issues. Why would I now choose to hide behind social media trolls and circulate old campaign artifacts if I wanted to run for any office? Anyone who has worked with us can easily surmise these are not our work methods because we always seek an honest, deeply engaging and thoughtful debate about what needs to be done. This is because we know that leadership is not positions and titles. It is hard work, it is thankless work, and without a genuine calling, few can sustain the pain of the marathon and the loneliness of hard decision making. Therefore, anyone who falsely or deliberately positions me in this angling, in this elbowing for positions, really insults both our intelligence and the work we do. Leadership is a selfless and genuine internal search for purpose, a search for meaning, and contribution to an institution. Leadership is a carefully sought out choice about who is capable among many who might often not even see a similar direction, but they share concerns about an institution at a given time and given circumstances. It is above all a negotiation with nature, a negotiation with multifaceted interests, and a negotiation with the future. Now, to many young people that I meet in our teaching sessions, I implore you now to focus on the greater issues of our country, especially the need for finding solutions to build an economy like rising waters that lifts all boats to the shore. I ask you to seek out what unites us and to shun the use of underhand methods as a means of getting into leadership. My favorite organizational management mentor, the late Peter Drucker said, and I quote, by themselves, character and integrity in the search for leadership do not accomplish much, but their absence faults everything else. Stay principled. I thank you.